ready. <laughs> so, uh, just one second. <laughs> so, so uh, I'm, a, I'm Diane and I'm a geek and I don't really have any stories of my own yet because I'm only 22. <laughs> and uh, what I do like to do is research and learn and that's why I work in the science gallery, should come closer, and I used to work on a science show and I, I just love learning about other things. Um, so I did some research uh, once upon a time. Uh, hopefully the next slide comes up. Oh, there we go. So this isn't my granddad, because I couldn't find a picture of my granddad on such late notice, because I only did this a couple of hours ago. But it represents my granddad, and everybody here can kind of identify that that looks like a granddad. So my granddad uh, took a heart attack, as old men do. I swear this is going to a happier place. Not hit, well, he did, eventually. Um, so he took a heart attack, it led to cardiac arrest, which, again, commonly happens, old men take heart attacks, commonly goes into cardiac arrest. Uh, he didn't die this time, though. Uh, <laughs> I won't talk about it the other time. Because the ambulance came and it had uh, a little box with it, uh, which was a portable defibrillator, which managed to save him, revive him, and give us, like, an extra seven years together, which just seemed to me to be mind-blowing and like unbelievable and like magic. So instead of taking time to be with my granddad, I learned about the portable defibrillator. I went into research mode uh, and it's incredible. So I want to tell you the story of the man behind the portable defibrillator uh, and his name is Frank Pantridge and that's him uh, in a painting. So first of all, I'm hoping that none of you know who he is because then it makes me kind of more of a martyr uh, and it makes the talk a little bit more interesting. So number one is that he's Irish. Uh, which is incredible, that he's an Irish man that created the portable defibrillator. This is a quote about him called, the name of Pantridge is known everywhere. Professor Pantridge's name is so well known that he could literally run for office. But none of you knew who he was, hopefully. Um, and this is American politics office, so it means a hell of a lot more there than in Ireland. Um, so, yeah, I'll just give you a little bit of information about him. So he came from Down. He was born in 1916. Uh, I might just open my book now. Uh, he went to Queen's University Belfast uh, and he studied medicine. He graduated in 1939 and as soon as war was declared, he uh, went and he fought in it and he was brilliant. He was a lieutenant. He uh, fought at the fall of Singapore and he was a prisoner of war there until the end of the war. Just an incredible man. Then afterwards, he... Uh, he, when the war was over, he became released, and then he uh, went back and he served, uh, not served, he went back to Belfast and he worked. And what he worked on was a portable defibrillator, because defibrillators until then were in the hospital, which is completely ridiculous, because if you have a heart attack within 10 minutes, you're dead. So you really need that there, otherwise it's useless. So the first one he made wasn't really portable, it attached to a car. The second one he made was portable, it was three kilos, that was incredible, that was a reduction of 147 kilos. And uh, it, it kind of got made by a little help from NASA, I just wanted to throw that in there because I know there's a lot of nerds here. Uh, and then the first ever cardiac ambulance uh, was made in Belfast in 1967, and that's just incredible that Belfast had the first ever cardiac ambulance, I think, anyway. Uh, again, I'm a geek with glasses, so what do I know? Uh, but yeah, this was uh, Fleet 113, um, it's still around, but it wasn't something that we adopted necessarily in all our ambulance. So President Lyndon Johnson had a heart attack in 1972. He was saved by a portable defibrillator because of Frank's invention. So America quickly adapted it, saved a president. We're going to have it in every ambulance, every hospital, on the wall of everything, uh, which made a lot of sense. But we didn't do that here. We waited until the 1990s to adopt it, which I just think seems sad. And so did Frank. You know, he's heartbroken that, that his own country, uh, that he also fought for, didn't get behind him. So that was a little bit sad. Uh, and the reason why it's kind of curious to me as well is the fact that uh, fire extinguishers are everywhere. And we all know how to use a fire extinguisher. But nowadays, you're more likely to die from cardiac arrest than you are from a fire. So why isn't there a portable defibrillator right beside that fire extinguisher? That's just what was happening in Ireland in the 1970s. We did have our own troubles. Get it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yeah, so he was this amazing brilliant man who was Irish, who saved incalculable, and I tried to calculate, lives. Um, and we didn't know who he was. That's eventually when it did get adopted in uh, ambulances in the UK. Uh, there was a 28 sterling uh, revamp of all the ambulances. Uh, but he died in 2004 and he felt unknown and he felt like his country didn't get behind him. So hopefully for five minutes we rectified that. The rest of the quote there was from the homeless ambulance man in the inner city ghettos uh, to the most uh, prestigious professors, uh, everybody knows his name, and now at the end of this presentation, so do you.